Hey everybody, Dear Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of The Charming Empire. We are on Koichiro Sarah's route, our bodyguard, and we are currently visiting the festival. Had a little altercation that he saved us from. Hopefully we'll get to enjoy ourselves a little bit more before heading back to the palace. Let's see. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. How far are we going? I'm walking along the main street. As always, Sarah is with me as my bodyguard, and he makes me feel safe. The fact that I'm a princess hasn't been announced to the public for security reasons, but... The information can leak, so we can't let our guard down. Sarah always reminds me of this, so I try to be careful at all times. Right now, Sarah's leading me to his favorite shop. Where are we going? A used bookstore. Sarah answers right away. Do you like to read? Yes. I used to read during my breaks when I was a palace guard. Your breaks? Does he have breaks now that he's my bodyguard? I feel like he's always by my side. Just as I'm about to ask, Sarah stops in his tracks. I gaze up at the building in front of us. It's an old wooden building that looks dark on the inside. Even though it looks closed, Sarah strides right in and I follow behind. The inside of the store is packed with books. They're not only on the bookshelves, but also overflowing onto the nearby chairs and desks. Ah, that's a pretty messy bookstore. An old man sits to the side with a mug in one hand and a newspaper in the other. He doesn't show any sign of greeting us. Sarah gazes up at the top shelf and speaks. And this place is probably boring for you. That's not true. I like reading too. Sarah raises his eyebrows at me. You read? I've never seen you read. Not even for my lessons? I used to read all the time in the countryside. Uh, um, can I buy something here? I change the subject before I get depressed. Sure, but there's a big library at the palace. Really? I didn't know that. Can you take me there sometime? Sure, but then coming here would be a waste. Let's buy you some books here that you find interesting. Aw, thank you. Th that's okay. It'll take too long for me to choose. Just looking at all the books makes my heart pound with excitement. You can buy something you like. I'm just here to accompany you. I'm fine with just looking today. I'll buy a lot next time, so don't worry about me. Sarah doesn't look convinced at first, but he ends up picking out a few books for himself to buy. I feel bad about being pushy, but Sarah doesn't seem mad. In fact, I'm relieved he looks happy with his purchases. I'm glad he gets to do something for himself for a change, since he doesn't get breaks as my bodyguard. I think this poor man is getting totally overworked. What are you smiling about? I'm glad you're having fun. You mean, we came here for me? Why do you concern yourself with me? I wanted to pay you back for your services, and I want to see where you usually go. You're strange. Sarah looks away, and for a second, it looks like he's smiling. Well, we went where I wanted to go. Now where do you want to go? Um, now that Sarah enjoyed himself... And I found out he likes books. I can talk to him about books later. Next, it's my turn to pick our destination. I want to go to a cafe. There was an article about them in the newspaper. Do you know where we can find one? Yes, but are you sure you don't want to see the festival? I'm sure. The festival looks like a lot of fun, but I don't know when I'll ever get to go to town again. I want you to take me to interesting places. I smile at Sarah. He stares at me for a minute before glancing at a group of young girls on the street. Hey, stop looking at the girls, look at me! You probably want to be free like those girls. Being a princess must be tough. Sarah says he doesn't know much about cafes, but he agrees to take me to one of the famous ones. The Hard Rock Cafe? Yuck, this is bitter. Not used to coffee, huh? When we enter the cafe, I order what the person next to me ordered. The drink I get smells great, but I can't help making a face at the bitter taste. Sarah replies calmly. It's not good if you just drink it like that. You need some sugar and cream. You should have told me that earlier. You started drinking so fast I thought you must have had it before. It smelled really good. Tears come to my eyes on my second sip. Jeez, that's a pretty extreme reaction. <laughs> I didn't really want any more, but I don't want to waste it either. It's even more bitter than Earl Grey. Ever since I came to the palace... I've been drinking Earl Grey from my teacups. I can drink it plain, but it's even better with a sugar cube. Yeah, same for the coffee, so try it. My tea is always served with some kind of sweet treat, so tea time is my favorite time of the day. 
I wonder if this will taste better with sugar. I take a sugar cube out of the bowl in front of me and drop it into my coffee. The white sugar melts into the black coffee as I stir it around with a spoon. I take another sip, but it's still bitter. It's still bitter. When I add two more cubes, the bitterness goes away, but it's still not very good. I reluctantly take a small sip. Are you enjoying watching this, Sarah? You can't give me a hint here. <laughs> you don't have to drink it if it's disgusting. Sarah picks up my cup in his big hand. He says this right in front of the cafe owner without any tact at all. When my eyes meet the cafe owners, I quickly explain. It, it's not disgusting. I just can't handle bitter things. In other words, you don't want to drink it. Um, well, I don't want to drink it, but I can't say that in front of the cafe owner. As I struggle to find the right words, Sarah sighs. <sighs> I understand you don't want to make trouble, but don't force yourself. Sarah starts drinking my coffee. He makes a face at all the sugar I put in. <laughs> you don't like sweet things? But continues to gulp it down. You know, I think if you put some cream or milk in my coffee, I probably would have liked it. S sarah I don't want him to drink my leftovers. I try to stop him, but I'm afraid I'll make him spill. As I wave my arms in the air, Sarah finishes the last drops. He just drank out of my cup. Indirect kiss. Sarah peers at my red face. What's wrong? N nothing It's so embarrassing to be looked at so closely that I turn away. I hope you're telling the truth. Let me know if you're not feeling well. Okay. For some reason, the redness in my cheeks won't go away. I hide my face for a few minutes to calm down before looking up again. Sarah looks bored as he drinks a glass of water. Even though you wanted to come here, you don't seem to be having much fun. Well, maybe you should have told me what was good to order. Sarah glances at me. That's not true. I love the feel of this place and I'm having fun. Sarah doesn't look convinced. I see. If you say so. How about we order something sweet for you? That's better. Something sweet? Cafes have desserts? You didn't know? I thought that's why you wanted to come here. I just wanted to come to an upper-class place. I heard cafes were all the rage in the capital. Your lessons are important, but you should know your country's latest trends. You'll need it when you marry abroad. You're probably right. I fall silent when Sarah starts talking about my marriage. No matter how hard I try to ignore it, my marriage to strengthen international relations is inevitable. Did I say something wrong? I smile so Sarah doesn't feel bad. No, you're absolutely right. I need to study up on this country's culture so I don't embarrass myself abroad. That's right. Um, but you still have time. It makes me feel a little bit better that he's trying to cheer me up. Just as I start feeling sad, a plate is set in front of me. Hmm? The white plate has a fragrant pastry on it with cream inside. It's a cute pastry that's small enough to fit in the palm of my hand. I'm pretty sure it's called a cream puff. It looks so cute. I reach out my hand for it but stop midway. Can I eat it with my hands? I had a feeling that it might be bad manners to eat this cute pastry with your hands. There might be a certain type of etiquette I need to follow. Nope, it's fine. Feel free to eat it with your hands. The waiter who bought the plate speaks softly to me before walking away. Okay, thank you. I pick up the pastry and hesitantly take a bite. The crisp sweetness fills my mouth. Yum! It's so delicious that I raise my voice, making Sarah chuckle. If Lord Amazaki or your tutor saw you get excited over a little pastry, they would get mad at you for not being very ladylike. Well, fortunately, they aren't here, and you are. I can just imagine them getting mad at me. So she would speak to me in a calm and quiet voice, while my tutor would yell at me with burning eyes. <laughs> what are you laughing about? I was just imagining how funny it would be for Soshi and my tutor to get mad at me at the same time. I put my hand over my mouth as I giggle. But you don't get mad at me, so... I'm glad you're with me today. Sarah gives me a quiet, strange look. How am I supposed to react to that? Is that a compliment? That's not really a compliment. It's more like I want us to go out together again. It's an expression of happiness, basically. Sarah puts on a bitter face. That sounds kind of misleading. <laughs> it made him blush. Misleading? Sarah takes a gulp of water instead of answering. I wait for him to continue as I watch him finish his water, but he keeps his mouth shut. I'm a little sad, but 
I suddenly realize that this is the first time Sarah and I have sat next to each other and talked like this. You're sitting with me today. He's always standing at attention behind me. I never realized that. If I treated you like I do at the palace, someone would realize your position and you wouldn't be able to walk freely. You're doing this for me? He's really thinking about me. Sarah talks like it's the most natural thing in the world, but his words make me smile. Let's get going. I'm sure you have other places you want to go to. Yeah, let's go. We stand up and walk out the door. When we leave the cafe, the sun is already starting to set. We stayed in the cafe longer than I thought, but we still have time. But rather than visiting all the places I want to go, I want to go somewhere both Sarah and I can enjoy. Like where? As we start to walk around again, the sky is dyed a bright red, and the street lights start turning on. Maybe we should go back to the palace. If we're out too late, you might not be allowed to come to town again. But we just got here. But I don't want Sarah to get in trouble. Yeah. When I reluctantly agree, Sarah answers quietly. You'll be able to come here again. Will you sneak me out? When I do, will you come with me? You want me to come with you? Well, as your bodyguard, I have to come with you, even if you don't want me to. That's not what I meant. Suddenly, an alarm goes off on the crowded main street. What's that sound? What's going on? A man runs by us yelling. Fire! Help us put it out, men! Fire? I'm not the only one surprised. Everyone starts running around in a panic when they realize what's going on. Before I get caught in the crowd, Sarah pulls me into an alley and we watch the people dash by. This doesn't look good. The fire is blocking our way to the palace. Sarah's grim face makes me feel anxious. Is there really only one way? It doesn't seem like the choice matters here, so I'm gonna say, are the houses okay? Because that seems nicer. Aren't the nearby houses and shops burning? Are they going to be okay? It looks like they're working to put out the fire. But there might be some houses that are already getting burnt to a crisp. Oh no. That can't be good. I hope no one was hurt. My face clouds over with worry. This is no time to be worrying about others. You won't be able to get home in this chaos. Ugh. Who knows what will happen in all this confusion. Whoever set the fire might not end there. We shouldn't move around too much. You're right, but what should we do? Follow me. Sarah pulls me with him by the shoulders. We walk through the alleys between buildings to get to a big street. I'm glad I'm not alone, but anxiety swirls inside of me. I didn't know anything when I was living at the palace, but now I know the town is a dangerous place. I was only called here to prepare myself for marrying abroad, but I wonder if there's anything I can do. I might be naive for thinking I can do something with my limited knowledge, but I have to give it a try. Like what? Am I going to try to help put out the fire? We'll find out in episode 6. Next time. I don't know, it looks like we're hiding in a shrine at the moment. Which, I know, I shouldn't have paid attention to it because that's for the next video, but I couldn't help seeing it. <laughs> Alright, well, yay, we did get to enjoy the festival more, which was really nice. Well, you know, outing. We mostly visited shops and stuff, not actually the festival. But, ah, uh, Sarah, I just, you know, love my big, strong, silent guys. Well, I hope to see you in the next video or in some of my other ones. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.